Central vacuums are a very niche form factor of cleaner. They have a powerful motor permanently fixed somewhere in the home, housed within a big bulky bin and filtration system. A network of ducting is plumbed in throughout the house to various wall port outlets where you can pull out a hose and attach a tool to vacuum with. There are three main types of central vac filtration technologies. Bagged, cyclonic with filter and cyclonic without filter. Many tout these vacuums as the ultimate available, but this is far from the truth and the rest of this video will explain why. The fully bagless cyclonic variety of central vac, despite being cyclonic, has a relatively very poor level of cyclonic filtration efficiency. In this example, it's only marketed as achieving 96-98% of dirt centrifuge from the air. They don't even tell you what the cyclonic cut point size is, i.e. how small they can filter particles down to and achieve 50% removal efficiency from the air. We know it's possible to get between 0.5 and 0.3 micrometers with good cyclonic filtration design, so there's no excuse for not achieving that. The consequence of this poor cyclonic filtration quality is that there's still a significant amount of dirt to handle. The filtered cyclonic systems require a filter to capture this remainder, as the name suggests. They claim it doesn't clog, but don't go as far as to explain, thus, why then you need to buy replacements. Despite their claim, by definition of how a filter works, and not to mention the laws of physics, they do clog and will cause a suction loss for a given input power, or require greater input power to overcome the suction losses by brute force. This is similar for the fully bagged systems, and replacing bags and filters adds to running costs and has significant negative impact on the environment that's wholly avoidable. So how do the filterless cyclonic systems cope with such poor filtration quality? Unimpressively, they cheat around this major problem by venting dirty filth into the outside air for everyone else. That's just plain polluting, and conjures up images of the pre-sewer Victorians throwing their feces out into the streets amongst everyone else. This is a disgusting cop-out non-solution to a difficult problem that the best in the industry successfully and effectively tackle, showing it can be done. The throw-out-of-the-window approach is extremely polluting and careless, and difficult to respect. Brute forcing even a mere 96-98% to cyclonic filtration efficiency with this poor technology requires an enormous power consumption far in excess of what's considered morally acceptable by today's standards and that we know can easily be achieved with good design. So again, there's no excuse. In fact, manufacturers of central systems likely know this and seemingly go out of their way to actually hide the power rating of their motors. They're never directly advertised and instead are obfuscated with lots of secondary distraction parameters such as operating voltage and current, which is really shady. While the true power consumed isn't simply the product of voltage and current, for complex electronic engineering reasons, this can still be used as a rough indicator. The manufacturer of AccuFlow, for example, provide a table of such values for their cyclonic systems. The average values have been used in calculations here, rather than peak, as this is most likely representative of typical use. It also produces smaller numbers. The two most power consuming products they offer appear to draw 2.5 to 3000 watts respectively, and the lowest end product consuming almost 1300 watts. This is astoundingly inefficient, particularly as plug in vacuum cleaners are expected not to consume more than 900 watts by law in the EU, and the highest holistically performing vacuum cleaners on the market consume around 525 watts. That's six times less power and associated expense to achieve the highest cleaning performance. Speaking of which, central vac manufacturers provide absolutely no data about their actual cleaning performance at the floor as measured to international industry standards. Instead, at the consumer front end are a selection of very misleading parameters that indicate more about the capability of the motor than actual cleaning performance. For example, there are three chestnut parameters that are commonly cited that are highly misleading when used to judge cleaning performance, but are good at indicating mechanical motor properties. The first is the sealed vacuum water lift, measured in inches of water in unintuitive units, or pascals in intelligent units. More professionally, this is referred to as the ultimate vacuum strength of the motor, and represents the suction pressure required to achieve a mechanical equilibrium, and therefore the lowest pressure the motor can produce. Central vacuums need motors which can produce high values of equilibrium pressure because they use a considerable length of ducting which provides a significant air resistance and represents a tremendous natural inefficiency in design and wastage of power. 
Only a high ultimate vacuum strength can overcome this resistance and provide sufficient flow at the open orifice of lengthy ducting. The second is volumetric airflow, measured in cubic feet per minute in unintuitive units, or meters cubed per second, or liters per second in intelligent units. This simply measures the volume of air that flows freely through an unimpeded orifice into the machine in a given amount of time, i.e. the flow rate. This varies as a function of the hose length, even for an open, unimpeded orifice, and hence why the maximum value is quoted by the manufacturer in this case. In reality, this is achieved with the shortest possible hose length, and so the flow rate experienced by the user at the end of a long hose in real-world cleaning will likely be considerably lower than this value. This is something to bear in mind in the event of specification bragging with these systems. Those high numbers are not applicable to most real-world use and won't be achieved, and many don't realise this. The third is the number of air watts. This is a measure of the power produced by the moving air in an unimpeded flow. Industry standards, as cited by this particular manufacturer, albeit only for this purpose, emphasise that this parameter is a measure of the above-floor cleaning potential. The key word here is potential, and many other design factors determine how well that potential is actually met at the floor, which I'll come on to in a moment. In some YouTube videos, you'll hear claims like the number of air watts is equal to the product of the CFM and inches of water divided by 8.5, which is a unit conversion factor. For the manufacturer data above, it clearly isn't true. For example, 208 multiplied by 122 divided by 8.5 is about 3000, not 903. Who's right and who's wrong, and how would you know? The actual cleaning performance, specifically at the floor, is the most relevant metric to measure in a vacuum cleaner, and none of these three parameters are directly relevant to determining that anyway, so they're a complete red herring. As soon as you put a carpet in the way of the airflow, it acts like a blocking filter, and the system then becomes very complex, multifactorial, and coupled. Even the properties of the carpet need to be directly considered. Determining resultant flow rates through the specific pile, accounting for flow head leaks, and the portion of the ultimate vacuum strength utilised, to determine the net forces on embedded particles, and how they then interact with, or get trapped in the pile as they accelerate, is very hard to directly measure, and unsurprisingly never done. The only relevant metric is the actual final average cleaning performance across all floor types, and that can be formally measured to strict international industry standards in professional testing. This is all covered in the video with the first link in the description. This is quite different to amateurish YouTube bedroom testing, which serves as nothing more than visual entertainment, despite what might be claimed. Manufacturers of these central vacuum products never present data showing their performance as measured to these formal tests. And that's very telling about the performance of the product, because manufacturers that do achieve the best empirical results are quite keen to advertise them. There's no formal evidence available of any greater performance from a central VAC system, despite the size of the numbers often bragged about, which, as stated earlier, come about due to the need to compensate for poor design. And then there's the issue of practicality. With a central vacuum, the user is still required to get tools from a cupboard and put away afterwards, even if the hose does pack away into the wall. The main unit also requires significantly more storage space than a standalone vacuum. There's also the need to make potentially significant modifications to a home to install port outlets and air pipe plumbing and power controls throughout the walls. The current movement to highly effective and extremely efficient, compact cordless mains equivalent vacuum cleaners is considerably more versatile. And then there's the environment to consider. Central vac systems are quite large, particularly compared to the best performing modern vacuums. When you include all the ducting and materials, the associated carbon footprint and environmental impact is relatively large. Such devices are not as good for the environment. Central vacuums are hugely more expensive than even the costliest commercial standalone vacuum. Typically, prices after tax and installation are at least $1,000 and involve plumbing and significant running costs, from either the substantially higher power requirements, as well as any potential ongoing running costs from filter or bag replacements. Fully cyclonic central vacuums are very expensive and very inefficient vacuum cleaners. They brute force, at great expense to the environment, a level of cyclonic filtration performance which is still relatively poor, 
and they cheat around the consequences of that inefficiency by pumping dirt they're not good enough to handle into the ambient environment, which is further polluting. Manufacturers provide no data about their actual cleaning performance at the floor, where it counts, as measured objectively to international industry standards. A company which has nothing to hide and genuinely feels they have an exceptional product will boldly state how well their vacuums perform in international industry standard tests. Conversely, companies that sell snake oil will prefer to mislead with irrelevant metrics and try to build a meme base that continually cites them as gospel. Many fall for it hook, line and sinker. This vacuum form factor, while no doubt functional, achieves those results inefficiently by brute force due to sloppy design. Anyone who wants a world-class vacuum cleaner utilising the latest and most advanced technology that performs to the highest standards under normal real-world conditions would do well to look at the most advanced cordless vacuums on the market.